this video, we will define and give some examples of different types of reinforcers. We will explain why we use reinforcers and provide some key points on how to use them to maximize their effectiveness. A reinforcer is anything contingent on a behavior that increases the likelihood of a behavior recurring. Simply put, reinforcers are rewards that we use to signal to a child that he or she has responded correctly and to encourage the child to respond the same way again. Reinforcers provide motivation and essential feedback to the child and strengthen learned responses. There are an endless variety of ways that you can reinforce a child. Here is a list of a few options. The most basic type of reinforcer that you can use is food or drink. If you give a child a piece of a desired food or a sip of a favorite beverage after responding correctly to a task, the child will be more likely to respond the same way again. Food or drink can be excellent reinforcers, especially at the beginning of therapy when you are still determining what the child might find rewarding. Other reinforcers include favorite toys, physical touch, and activities such as tickles, bouncy knee rides, or hugs as rewards for correct responses. If the child enjoys these things, they can be wonderful reinforcers. Another useful reinforcer is task avoidance. Ending the task at hand can be very rewarding for many children. Removing the teaching materials from the table, throwing away quiz cards as they are finished, or allowing the child to get up and leave can be very potent reinforcers. Goodness. Marvelous! Do this. Do this. That's right, Corey! Do this. Do this. Wonderful! Do this. Do this. Oh! Amazing! Let's go play! Another important type of reinforcer is verbal praise. Verbal praise is a bit different from the reinforcers mentioned so far, because most children with autism will likely be indifferent to verbal praise at first. However, verbal praise is very commonly used in our society today. Therefore, it is important to teach children with autism to learn how to enjoy it. To accomplish this, we must always include verbal praise with the other types of rewards that we use. Touch shoe. Oh, way to go. I know how hard you're working. Good work. I've got more crackers. By consistently pairing verbal praise with other rewards, such as food, toys, or physical touch, the children will slowly learn to enjoy it. The last types of reinforcers that we will discuss are counters and token systems. When counters or tokens are used, the child earns tokens or points that can be exchanged for rewards. Here is an example of a counter in which the child must earn all the pieces of a puzzle in order to get the end reward. Um, what do you want? <gasps> Swim. Alrighty. Oh, why? Oh, why? Look, we're gonna get all the cars. Yeah. And then cookie. cookie. Yay. Yay. Shoes. Oh, here it comes. Put it on. There, you got one. Wow. One more. Shoes. Here, let me put it on for you. There it goes. Boink. Shoes. Wonderful. Do, 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 do. There you go. Shoes. Boink. Boink. Boop. I'll pull it on this one. Shoes. 
shoes. Ah, oh, boink! You need one more, then you get cookie. Shoes. Here it goes! Boink! Look, you got all your cars! Time for cookie! Yummy, 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 yummy! Counters and tokens tend to be used when children are slightly more advanced in their treatment programs. They allow us to teach children to work for short periods of time without receiving a concrete reward. Many different kinds of counters can be generated, and we can vary the number of responses needed to get the end reward. Clap hands. Now that we have explained Whoa, what reinforcers are, let's talk about why we use them. There it goes. Right One there. reason we use reinforcement hey, is to provide feedback about the correctness of a response. Because children with autism have difficulty processing language, we must rely on reinforcers to let children know when they have responded in the way that we want. Fox. The second reason we use reinforcement is to motivate the child to learn. Our goal is to make therapy so reinforcing that the child looks forward to this time of day as the time of day when great things happen. There are several key points to keep in mind in order to maximize the effectiveness of reinforcement. If a child gives the correct response, we must deliver the reinforcement immediately. The therapist must be enthusiastic and involved, and the reinforcement must be varied. These components ensure that we reinforce the target behavior. The reinforcement must be immediate because if reinforcement is delayed, we might inadvertently reinforce something the child does after the target behavior. By reinforcing immediately, we let the child know clearly which response was correct. Reinforcement is also more effective if we involve ourselves in whatever type of reinforcement we are using. Make the play fun. For example, if we are giving a child a piece of food, instead of just placing it on the table for the child, we can fly it to the child like an airplane. Chips! Oh, wow, that was great! Yummy! Do this puzzle. Way, we become reinforcers for the child. Marvelous, Corey, which one? Awesome! The last point is to ensure that reinforcement is varied. Varying reinforcement means two things. First, we must constantly change reinforcers. Second, we must vary the intensity of reinforcement depending on how the child responds. Constantly changing a reinforcer means that a reinforcer should not be used more than twice in a row before another reinforcer is substituted. If a child is given the same reinforcer repeatedly, the child will get bored with it and no longer find it rewarding. This is called satiation, and it can greatly slow down the progress of a child. Varying the intensity of reinforcement is called differential reinforcement. Differential reinforcement means that the child will receive a more preferred reward for better effort or a well-executed response. By saving the best reinforcers for the child's biggest efforts, we encourage the child to put forth a maximum effort. Now that we have defined reinforcers and talked about how to use them, we need to discuss how to develop new reinforcers. We must be constantly searching for new and effective reinforcers in order to vary them and avoid satiation. One way to develop new reinforcers is to observe what the child enjoys doing during free play. Favorite toys can be reserved for use in therapy or used as rewards after therapy. If the child likes television, he or she could earn tokens towards watching five minutes of television. Another way of finding new reinforcers is to modify a child's existing self-stimulatory behaviors. Gazing at a light, arm flapping, spinning, 
and lining things up in rows are all common self-stimulatory behaviors. It is often possible to modify these behaviors so that they are non-disruptive and more socially acceptable. For example, if a child likes to gaze at lights, you could teach the child to enjoy playing with a kaleidoscope and then use that toy as a reward. Finally, you can test for new reinforcers using a reinforcement survey. To do this, present the child with a choice of two potential reinforcers and keep track of which one the child chooses. Once you find a reinforcer that works to motivate the child, you should not allow the child to play with it outside of therapy. And within therapy, you should limit the time that the child has access to the reinforcer to about 10 to 20 seconds each time it is used. By reserving reinforcers for therapy, you increase the chances that the child will remain interested in them and motivated to learn. So far in this video, we have defined reinforcement and given some examples of different types of reinforcers. We explained why we use reinforcers and provided some examples of how to use them to maximize their effectiveness. We also discussed ways to develop reinforcers that are the most effective for each child. I hope that you have found today's training video useful and I would like to wish you the best of luck.